Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Um, today, so... Uh, <laughs> Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to have a little bit more of a look at photographs and dating your photographs. So last week I did a similar video just about different types of photographs and about how to analyze your photographs, but I thought I would just take a bit of a deeper dive into dating your photos and I thought I would specifically look at how you can do this via fashion or costume, what the people were wearing. Before I get started, if you haven't already, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so that you are updated of all of my future videos and you don't miss out on any. Okay, that being said, let's move on. So dating photos by people's clothing isn't a totally straightforward process. Um, there's just a few things that you've got to kind of keep in mind that I'll just talk about before even getting into the sort of different clothing of different eras. Um, for starters, just remember that getting a photo taken was a special occasion, so people tended to wear their absolute best clothes. Um, if they didn't have any good enough clothes, they would have borrowed them either from people that they knew or they often borrowed them also from the studio who was taking the photos. This is really important to remember because if you're going to be dating a photo based on what they're wearing, just remember they might have had their best outfit for years or they might be borrowing somebody else's really good outfit that they've had for years. So the fashion may not exactly be completely up to date. It may be an older kind of style, but it's just their best dress. So, <laughs> and this also kind of goes for accessories. So they may be wearing a dress or something that's a few years old and then they may be wearing more up to date accessories. So sometimes you've kind of got to look at the combination of different elements um, so really at best what it's going to provide you with is an earliest kind of date um, obviously they couldn't be dressed in this fashion at an earlier time so it'll give you the earliest date and then you're going to have to use a little bit more detective work to get the exact sort of and narrow it down more so just to expand on this point um, Older people also were slower in kind of changing their fashions, as kind of it is today, I guess. People kind of get stuck in their ways, what they normally wear, so if the person getting their photo taken is older, then they're probably more likely to be wearing an older style. Um, another thing to remember is that um, the wealthier people would have been more up to date with fashion than poorer people or even people from rural or regional kind of communities because it took time for fashions to kind of trickle down from the more sort of wealthy classes down to people who could then maybe afford it later on and um, certainly if you're in a more sort of rural area it would have taken a long time for the fashions from the city to get sort of out to the country so make sure that you keep those things in mind too. All of that being said, just to confuse you, <laughs> um, getting a new outfit was also kind of a special occasion in which you might get your photo taken. So let's say that somebody's attending a wedding or a christening or a funeral or something like that, and they've actually got a new outfit for that occasion. That would also be a reason to take a photograph. So that would suggest that their outfit is kind of more fashionable or contemporary. So. There's kind of two sides to that like coin and you've got to keep them both in mind when you're looking at the clothing. So one other thing that I'll just mention is that because of the photographic kind of methods that they used at the time, um, it was hard for them to take good photos of people in light coloured clothing. So earlier photos, you'll almost always see them wearing darker clothing. And that was because they were basically told to. The studio needed them to wear darker clothes. Um, so if... You know, it'll be pretty rare for you to find sort of a white bridal dress or light coloured clothing in earlier sort of photographs. Uh, yeah. Okay, so all of that being said, make sure that you keep all of that in mind when you're looking at your photos. But now I'll just move on to talking a little bit about some of the things that maybe distinguish certain eras. Um, I'm not going to go into every single kind of piece of clothing, but... If you want more detail, I can make more videos on this. So let me know if you want more detail, if 
you know, there's particular eras that you want me to look at or a particular fashion sort of styles or anything like that. If you want more detail, let me know. Otherwise, I'm just going to kind of do a bit of an overview of some of the more distinguishing features of different kind of eras. All right, so to start with, I'll just look at men in the 1850s. They tended to have um, oiled hair and they wore their moustaches kind of thick in the center and then tapered out at the edges. They also often wore goatees. Um, they tended to have their pocket watch um, looped through one of the buttonholes in their shirt and in their right pocket. Their waistcoats tended to be long-waisted, um, but they had sort of a little notch in the center where it sort of... Um, they also had kind of upstanding stiff collars with a narrow kind of um, tie or bow tie type thing. There were a variety of different kinds of coats then, like um, the frock coat, the dress coat, the tail coat, a few different kinds. But when we move into the 1860s, men also wore the new kind of lounge suit, which was a new kind of thing then. They tended to match their sort of waistcoats and their jackets and their pants together. They also started to get fly fronts in their trousers and they were more likely to wear knickerbockers. They came into fashion. Also in the 1860s, the men tended to have whiskers, so thick kind of whiskers and the hair was thicker at the sides and it sort of blended into the whiskers. Um, you almost never saw clean shaven men in the 1860s. In the 1870s, there was more kind of bushy beards and shorter hair. Um, they also wore their trousers a bit more fitted and ever so slightly flared around the ankles. Up until this point, their boots and shoes tended to have square toes, but during the 1870s, they started to bring in some pointed kind of toes. So if it's maybe late 1870s um, and onwards, you'll start to see pointed toes as well. I forgot to mention in the 1860s, another kind of quirk then was they often wore a few buttons undone in their waistcoat so that the shirt underneath was kind of poking through. So. Yeah, that was just something that seemed to appear during the 1860s. Anyway, back to the 1870s. Um, the 1870s also saw straw hats coming in for men. Uh, the 1880s, you started to... Um, the 1880s, men had their hair combed straight back and slick. And they also... Droopy moustaches kind of came into fashion. Um, only older men tended to have the bushy beard thing happening anymore. Also in the late 80s, they started wearing their watches differently. So the the watch would actually go from sort of one side of the waistcoat to the other, um, rather than through the buttonhole like they used to earlier. Okay, in the 1890s, the um, necktie became really popular and there was some variations on that, bow ties and neckties, but they were super popular then. Um, also the trousers tended to be um, have a crease like pressed right down the front. Uh, they didn't invented the trouser like the press that would um, do that. So you'd occasionally see it in earlier photos, but from sort of the 1890s, that that line down the center front was really popular. Um, young men tended to have clean shaven faces, but also the like walrus kind of moustache was um, becoming popular. Uh, hair was short at the back and smooth. The mid 1890s, they also started wearing cummerbunds around their middle and they liked to have walking sticks in their photos as well then. In the late 1800s and early 1900s, um, sideburns were really out of fashion. So you'd only occasionally see them on older men, but they, oh my God, my battery. So moving into the um, 1910s, after the war, you didn't tend to see walking sticks anymore and wrist watches only sort of appeared after the war as well. Okay, my battery is running out and I've realized that... Okay, I feel like I should stop here. This video is probably going to get too long and in-depth if I keep going. So I think I'll film a part two next week where I go a bit more into women's clothing and children as well. Um, let me know if you enjoyed this and if you do want more in-depth videos. But I will be back next week with more um, about dating photos using fashion. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and make sure you hit the subscribe button while you are here. 
and I hope that you have a great day and thank you so much for hanging out with me and I will see you soon in my next video. Bye!